Hello, my name is Keith Haswell. I'm a professional astrologer and I've done about 45 videos before this one so it is recommended that you look at those ones uh, first. This one I want to talk with you about self-punishment. Not with the idea of doing more of it but with the idea of stopping self-punishment. We, as a human family, have a tendency to punish ourselves. And we punish ourselves in so many different ways that we wouldn't even recognise normally as being self-punishment. So just sit back and relax now and I'll uh, share with you some things that I've picked up along the way about the nature of reality and our place in that reality and also about how you can define self-punishment for yourself, the way you do it, why you do it and uh, how you do it and also steps to take in order to be able to break that cycle of punishing yourself. Now we're all in incarnation, we're all signed up on the inner side of life to a series of incarnations and we have done so in order to be able to grow and reach and stretch to become more of who we really are and the basic objective and purpose of life and reincarnation is consciousness expansion to continue to be able to expand your consciousness which means basically to continue to expand your awareness about the nature of reality and your place in that reality and ultimately to expand your understanding and awareness about the plan that God and Goddess have for you and how you can intelligently cooperate with that plan. Now there's basically two different worlds that we find ourselves polarized in as a human family. There's a world of love and that world is a world of happiness which is the fulfillment of your needs. It's a world of joy which is the fulfillment of your preferences. It's a world of happiness, joy, abundance, success, magic and miracles in our life. It's a world of giving and loving and caring and sharing and enjoying all the fruits of life that God and Goddess have given us. Now the other world is a world of the opposite of love which is fear. They're the two root emotions in the universe and if you live in the world of fear in a space-time rule set that is based on fear then it will be a world of struggle, hardship and pain and you have to work out which world that you are in. If you are in pain either physically or emotionally or mentally then you are living in that alternative world of fear and so I want to help you to understand a bit more about the nature of reality and the power that you've been given by God and Goddess and then to analyze uh, how you punish yourself and why you punish yourself and also how to go about ending the pain, ending the punishment. So just sit back and relax now and enjoy this. We're all living in a space-time rule set. Now look, we think that we're physically polarized. We think that we're conscious in the physical world and that our consciousness is polarized in the physical reality and in our body. Science would like, to, like us to think that 
everything just comes from our brain and that it's all just to do with physical because it's convenient for them to be able to say that everything's physical because then they can measure it with their microscopes and their instruments and uh, the telescopes and so forth. They have instruments that can only measure the physical reality and our physical brain and they like to think that everything comes from just the physical but the metaphysical world is where we really are polarized and that is the world of our emotions and feelings and the mental world of our ideas and thoughts and of course there's the higher world of the higher mind and the intuition and the spiritual will which are our area of the soul and our spiritual focus and consciousness which is where we are all growing towards but God and Goddess have given us the power to create our reality and we do so through our raw materials everybody's got the same raw materials these are our attitudes beliefs thoughts feelings decisions and choices and we mold and shape these raw materials into the events and conditions of our lives through three tools nobody has any extra tools or different ones and these tools are our desire our imagination and our expectancy now in this experience of life this experience of incarnation we come into incarnation and we don't remember our past lives why Be the reason why is because it would be too disconcerting to remember all of the things that you've done in your past life it's bad enough trying to forget the things that you've done that are wrong and uh, that you're not happy about from this life let alone trying to recall all the negative things that you've done we've all done terrible things in past lives and so God and Goddess in their wisdom in each incarnation give us a new brain and a new memory and a new subconscious mind to store all of that in there but we have a permanent part of ourselves which is in the soul arena and that part of ourselves stores from past lives all of the qualities principles and values of the soul that we have developed within ourselves from these past lives so we take our first breath in each lifetime when the planetary locations are in their right configuration to perfectly suit and express the nature of our personality as we've developed it from past lives and in the horoscope we can see where our tests and everything lie so that just gives you a little bit of a groundwork and a basic idea of where we're all at and how we grow and reach and stretch we grow and reach and stretch and become more of who we really are by facing the events that we create and we're all creating our events of our life nothing is imposed upon us everything is done according to the laws that God and Goddess have set into place the law of attraction and the law of cause and effect so we attract towards ourselves that which is in the nature of our recurring and predominant patterns of thought and feeling so we have all of these negative beliefs that we have inside of ourselves and we believe that we need to be punished and so let's look at this self-punishment thing and try and define how do we go about punishing ourselves well the first way that we punish ourselves is through procrastination procrastination is the thief of time and procrastination basically is putting off until tomorrow 
that which you could do and should do today. And the reason why we punish ourselves through procrastination is because we don't want to take responsibility. We don't want to take responsibility for the events of our life and so we delay and we obstruct and we uh, put things off. That is a way of punishing ourselves. Now it's important to understand that self-punishment is not physical punishment. You're not hitting yourself with a hammer or driving nails into your hand or sticking pins in your face or anything like that. We're talking about emotional pain and mental pain that comes from our actions in life. So when we procrastinate and put off things, we're not accepting responsibility. We're deferring things. And how does that make us feel? One of our needs are our esteeming needs, our estimation, subjective estimation or appraisal of ourself. So if we are not taking responsibility in our lives through procrastination and putting things off, then how does that make us feel? We don't feel good about ourselves. Our self-esteem goes down. Our love of self, what you might say, goes down. Our esteem or estimation, subjective appraisal of ourself goes down. And what do we tend to do then? We tend to mollify this pain that we feel on emotional and mental levels through addictive patterns of behaviour and addictive patterns of excesses. And these excesses and these addictive patterns of behaviour, our addictions basically, are addictions to things like alcohol, drugs including, including pharmaceutical drugs, and also addiction to sex, addiction to pornography, addiction to overindulging in the social side of life and the entertainments and amusements, addiction to food that we know is not good for us, and addiction to a whole range of negative emotions that we harbour within ourselves as a result of these addictions and ad these addictions are just as painful for us addictions to self-pity addictions to fear addictions to stress and tension anxiety addiction to struggle and hardship addiction to martyrhood addiction to guilt addiction to shame and addiction to control, manipulation and domination. So these are all emotional habit patterns and physical habit patterns of behaviour which are our means of punishing ourselves to inflict pain upon ourselves. Now why do we allow ourselves to become addicted to our unhealthy patterns of behaviour, our painful patterns of behaviour, our addictive patterns of behaviour. We do so in order to put off or avoid the punishment that comes to us from others the pain that comes to us from others, specific intimates in our life. The reason being and the logic being that, oh, don't criticise me with that biting criticism about my addictive patterns of behaviour here. I'm in pain, I'm hung over. I'm suffering withdrawal symptoms. I'm grossly overweight and I'm finding it hard to exist and survive. i am in got ill health because of all of these addictions to alcohol and drugs and 
pharmaceutical drugs and so on and so forth. Leave me alone, I'm in pain. And so to avoid the pain from specific intimates, we inflict the pain upon ourselves. Another way that we punish ourselves, another way that we allow pain to be inflicted upon, upon ourselves, is by the avoidance of love, the blockages that we have inside of ourselves. We all have a number of blockages such as a refusal to love, a refusal to feel our feelings. We all have needs in life and some of those needs are that we need to be loved and we need to express our feelings. And so we refuse under the auspices of self-punishment to let love in. We have somebody who says that they love us, but we don't believe. They've got to prove that they love us. And so we don't believe that we are lovable when we have all of these negative habit patterns of behaviour, these addictive patterns of behaviour. We all have a need to express our feelings and to feel our feelings. But we refuse to feel our feelings and we numb ourselves. We go into the introspective side of ourselves, of our not being worthy of love, not being worthy of the expression of our feelings. Another way that we punish ourselves is we refuse to be intimate. We refuse to allow success into our lives. We trip ourselves up in so many different ways. Self-sabotage. When success is just within our reach, we end up going into one of our habit patterns of behaviour, like alcohol or drugs or overdoing it with food or overdoing it with the social side of life or whatever, we will not allow that success to come into our life because we don't believe that we deserve to have success. Another one of our blockages, which is one of our favourites for punishing, punishing ourselves, is to not allow fun, to not allow ourselves to have fun, the denial of success, the denial of fun, the denial of love, the denial of intimacy, and the denial of enjoyment of life. Now, we ask ourselves the question here at this point, why do we punish ourselves? Why do we allow ourselves to be enamoured with our blockages and our addictive patterns of behaviour that only bring emotional pain? Well, we do so because we want to mollify the pain inflicted upon us by specific intimates to avoid the pain inflicted upon us with their biting criticism about our patterns of behaviour, our addictive patterns of behaviour. But we have also been taught by society and by our parents as we were growing up that we deserve to be punished. That we are bad. It was expedient for parents to just say when you are wrong or you are naughty or you fail that you are bad. They don't explain why you are bad and why we regard you as being bad because you had a negative impact upon somebody else or upon them. They just say, because it's expedient, you're bad and you therefore need to be punished. 
and you don't question their logic. Teachers tell you as you are growing up if you were wrong or if you failed that you are bad and need to be punished. Go and stand in the corner and ridicule you. Religion teaches you that you are bad, that you are a sinner and need to be punished, that sinning is bad, that God is a punishing God and a vengeful God and you should fear the vengeance of the Lord, that God is an angry God and someone to be feared. Another reason why you punish yourself is because we all have an echelon of needs. We have survival needs, we have security needs, we have belonging needs, and we have esteeming needs. Now, in our addictive patterns of behaviour, we don't have our own esteem of self. So therefore we seek false self-esteem through outside validation by others. We seek their appraisal, their approval. And when we can't find that approval because of our negative habit patterns of behaviour, our addictive patterns of behaviour, then we turn to self-punishment. Another reason why we punish ourselves is because we are taught by society that we shouldn't feel, we shouldn't express our feelings. Society says, don't express your feelings, it'll only get you into trouble, it'll make you vulnerable, it'll be a sign of weakness, and you'll be dominated and controlled by others. Women, you're allowed to cry. Cry when you're happy, cry when you're sad, cry when you're fearful, cry when you're worried, cry when you're angry, you're allowed to cry. Men, you're not supposed to express your feelings. Stiff up a lip. Control those feelings. Men, you're not allowed to cry. You're not allowed to express affection. But if you must do it, then for God's sake, do it privately and be quick about it and quickly get your way back into your controlled position in society. Now, how do we get out of this web of pain, this web of fear, this space-time rule set that we find ourselves in that is filled with pain, pain inflicted upon ourself by ourself. Well, the way to do it is to learn how to process your emotions. Processing is a division of the science of meditation. And basically the idea of processing your addictive patterns of behaviour and your methodologies for self-punishment is to acknowledge, to own, to forgive yourself, and to change. A four-step process. Acknowledge, first of all, that yes, I do have addictive patterns of behaviour. I do have blockages that I allow myself to become enamoured with. And acknowledge and own that the fact that you do do that to yourself and that that is your way, your means, your methodologies for punishing yourself, 
Yes, I acknowledge that I punish myself through my addictions to drugs or alcohol or overeating or food that's bad for me or overindulgence in sex or overindulgence in the social and entertainment sphere. I do acknowledge and own that behaviour and I do acknowledge that I do have blockages that I do refuse to feel and express my feelings, that I do refuse to allow fun, that I do refuse to allow love into my life and intimacy and caring into my life in the false belief that I don't deserve and that I'm bad and need to be punished. And to own that, you see, if you own something, you can do something about it. If you wanted to, to sell someone uh, something, you must have title to it. You must have ownership. You could try to sell the San Francisco Bridge to people, but if they weren't a fool, they would ask you, <laughs> you don't own this, show us the title. Then with that ownership of some property or something like that, you can then pass it on to them and re receive the financial remuneration. But if you don't have ownership of that property, well then of course you cannot do anything with it. And it's the same with owning your addictive patterns of behaviour, owning your methodologies for punishing yourself and inflicting pain upon yourself. And don't let yourself fall into the trap of not recognising that Emotional pain and mental pain is where most of these self-punishment and the pain of self-punishment comes from. Our feelings of not deserving, our self-pity, our uh, struggle and our hardship, our denial of fun, our refusal to be loved, our blockages that we refuse to feel and express our emotions. And so therefore, we have these methodologies of self-punishment. So to own those different methodologies of yours as your way of inflicting pain upon yourself, your way of punishing yourself. Yes, I realise that I do it to avoid the pain inflicted upon me from others, specific intimates, and then to forgive yourself is the third step in the process. And to forgive yourself, that is the thing that brings about and opens the door to change. Well, how do you forgive yourself? Well, imagine if somebody had done something wrong by you and they came to you for forgiveness. There would be acknowledgement that they had caused and had an impact upon you of pain and hurt and they acknowledge and own that action you have a feeling and an assurance from them that it can be fixed and that it won't happen again and you forgive them well that's exactly the same way that you forgive yourself you acknowledge, you have ownership, you forgive yourself, and then you change. Another way that we inflict pain upon ourselves is by getting into a relationship for the specific purpose or the subjective purpose of that person inflicting pain upon you. I don't know why I love you. You're all the time shredding me and tearing me down and criticising me and pulling me down and making me feel bad about myself. I don't know why I love you. That is the exact reason that you are in the relationship is because of 
wanting to punish yourself through specific intimates in your life. So it's time now to end the pain. It's time now to end the self-punishment. It's time now to stop punishing yourself. And I have a CD, a full CD, which is much more full of information that I'm prepared to give you free of charge. And in that CD, I actually not only explain in a lot more depth the ways that we punish ourselves and the why of why we punish ourselves and the how to stop the self-punishment but I also give you specific techniques and I take you into a beautiful meditation which is designed to stop the self-punishment and I'm prepared to supply that CD to you online by email uh, free of charge so I can't be any fairer than that so it's time now to end the pain it's time now to stop punishing yourself it's time now to let go of your blockages to let go of your belief that you are bad and wrong and terrible and that you are a failure and that you need to be punished. It's time to let go of the belief that God and Goddess are punishing gods and that you need to fear them. It's time to let go of the societal imposts upon us to not express our feelings and so we turn to self-punishment uh, and a way of developing our self-esteem through false self-esteem outside validation yes it's time to move out of the world of fear where you're experiencing pain and struggle and hardship blockages denial of fun denial of success refusal to be loved into a world of love where you can experience happiness the fulfillment of your needs and joy the fulfillment of your preferences it's time now to reach and stretch and grow and become more of the giant that you truly are through learning about the science of meditation through learning how to process and learning ultimately from me through future videos that I'll be re releasing on how to program your reality so that it will reflect more success and joy and wonder and happiness and miracles into your life, a life of abundance and fulfillment and high self-esteem and self-love. So yes, these are the things that I want to share with you and order my CD by simply sending me an email and requesting the free CD on stopping self-punishment and I'll be happy to send that to you, the link so that you can download it. So I thank you for the opportunity to share this with you here today on this video and I look forward to getting feedback from you on the video and the impact that it had upon you and also my other videos. There's so much there to learn. There's so much there that you don't yet know about the nature of reality and your place in that reality. There's information and knowledge available that wasn't available 200 years ago or a hundred years ago the whole of the teaching about God and goddesses world didn't finish and end 2000 years ago there's information and knowledge being released now and the day of the individual guru is finished that day is finished it's a group activity now there's so many 
like myself who are working to disseminate knowledge and understanding about the tremendous amount of power that you have inside of yourself. And I invite you to visit my website, get your horoscope done, en enroll in my intensives and start the journey of the unfoldment of your consciousness, the unfoldment of your goodness, truth and beauty, the unfoldment of your power, strength and talent. So thank you for the opportunity to share this with you and I look forward to working further with you should you decide to have your horoscope done by me or by ordering that free CD. Thank you.